I'm Town Manager Stephen Crane, and I'd like to talk to you a little bit about the upcoming Fall Town Meeting, which will be on Tuesday, November 5th at 7 p.m. in the Longmeadow High School Gymnasium. The Fall Town Meeting is also sometimes called the Special Town Meeting, and one of the major parts of the warrant are transfers to take care of some accounting for the annual town budget. I'd like to go through a few of those articles for you. The transfers that are being made are, being, are largely being made from what is called free cash. And free cash is a term that is used to describe the money that is left over in the town budget when expenditures are less than projected and or revenues are greater than projected. When the town prepares the annual budget and presents it to annual town meeting in the springtime, the revenues and expenditures are presented equally, meaning the revenues equal the amount of expenditures. Sometimes, through a variety of factors, expenditures are less than projected and revenues turn out greater than projected. One of the reasons that this happens is because the town takes conservative approaches to budget assumptions to avoid a shortfall in the annual town budget. So when we call it free cash, it really is a result of conservative budgeting assumptions along with variables such as cost control measures implemented during the year, weather and non-predictable factors such as staff turnover, and other uh, enhancements from revenues that aren't expected. It's still taxpayer funds generated by the property tax levy. And we make sure we use it to fulfill our budget obligations. This year, the state has certified our free cash at about 992000 The articles on the fall town meeting warrant will use about 664000 of that amount. Even though the articles on the warrant are reflective of recommendations made by town government, only fall town meeting can appropriate free cash. The town, in addition to free cash, the town also has an operational stabilization fund. This is like a rainy day or savings account for the town. Its current balance is $2.19 million. A healthy operational stabilization fund helps keep a good bond rating for the town, which reduces our interest and borrowing costs. The town has a policy that when free cash exceeds $500,000 after all of the town's financial needs are met, additional funds are put into the operational stabilization fund. As I previously noted, we, will, we are not making a transfer into the operational stabilization fund because the amount left over is short of the 500000 Article 1. Article 1 seeks to raise and appropriate the sum of $119,424, or a greater or lesser sum, into the Community Pres Preservation Fund. Under the law, Community Preservation Act funds have to be used for several purposes, but three specific purposes are, re are required by law. One is housing, one is historic preservation, and one is for open space. 10% of the revenues gained for the Community Preservation Act through the set aside on our property taxes have to be applied to each of those three functions. So Article 1 makes those transfers. The money being transferred through this article is not earmarked for any particular project, but rather it'll be added to the current fund balances for the CPA in each of those categories. Article 2. Article 2 seeks to transfer funds in the amount of 385000 from the Treasury to offset deficits with the current year budget. At the annual town meeting when the budget was approved, an amendment was made on the floor of town meeting to reallocate $300,000. Additionally, after the budget was set at the annual town meeting, the town received a judgment on an assessment case 
that reduced the assessed value of a property in town by a significant amount greater than was predicted. Those two factors have resulted in a budget deficit of $385,000. Some of the free cash that were that the state has certified will be used to offset that deficit if this article is approved. Article 3. Article 3 re seeks to transfer available funds from the Treasury in the sum of $90,000 or a greater or lesser amount to cover a triennial update of all properties in town. Every three years, the Massachusetts Department of Revenue requires the town to analyze its assessed values against the actual sales data from the previous six to 18 months to ensure that the assessed value is a reflection of the fair market value. These, funds, these requested funds will help offset the costs to do that triennial valuation. Article 4. To see if the town will raise and appropriate the sum of $42,070 or a greater lesser sum for a sewer project at the Emerson Road pump station. Article 5 seeks to raise and appropriate $57,548 or a greater or lesser sum for a water utility project uh, at the Forest Glen water pump station. These two articles will pay the first principal payment on the bonded amount of these projects that was approved at the, at the annual town meeting in this last spring. Article 6. Article 6 seeks to transfer funds in the amount of $19,275 or a greater or lesser sum for the purposes of paying bills of prior year. And this article is related to our solid waste and recyclable collection and disposal. Each year, the town contracts for the removal and disposal of solid waste and recycling. And the funds that are budgeted for that service every year are based on the amount or the, vo or the tonnage of those materials. In fiscal year 2013, the tonnage was greater than what was budgeted for, so the budget for that service had a shortfall of about $20,000. Article 7. Article 7 seeks to establish an interest-bearing account so people can make donations for the Ian Wax Memorial Tree of Courage. Under Mass General Law, donations to a municipality go into the general fund unless otherwise directed by a legislative act of the town. In this case, the town and the school committee would like the donations that are received for this important memorial to be able to earn interest. And this article will establish an account that can do that. Article 8 seeks to transfer a sum of $100,000 to offset the cost of retaining legal representation and consultants to help address a surrounding community agreement with a possible casino in the city of Springfield. Currently, the city of Springfield has, a pro has approved a, re a referendum on a host community agreement to have the MGM Resorts Company build a resort casino in the city of Springfield. Under the state law that governs expanded gaming, the developer, in this case MGM, is required to negotiate separate surrounding community agreements with, which e with each of the communities around Springfield that are impacted. To help protect the town's interests, we are retaining legal counsel as well as consultants to help assess the impacts of, of a casino in Springfield on the quality of life in, in, in the town of Longmeadow. Although we are seeking $100,000 in free cash to help offset these costs, we will pursue reimbursement of these costs from both MGM as well as the Massachusetts Gaming Commission which has set aside funds to offset costs to communities for these types of purposes. Article 9. Article 9 seeks to transfer the sum of $10,000 or a greater or lesser amount to cover the costs of operating and maintaining the clay courts at Bliss Park. The purpose of this article is to ensure that the costs to open, 
operate and maintain the clay courts will be a part of the town budget for this coming spring as well as future town budgets. The clay courts, which are costly to maintain, were closed for several years and were reopened fairly recently because, through a private donation, which we are very grateful for. This year, about $4,000 of town funds were applied to these costs as well as uh, another private donation. The 10000 will make sure that the opening and maintaining of the courts isn't dependent on a private donation and will be a part of, again, this year's budget as well as future budgets. We still will happily accept a private donation to offset these costs and are grateful for the contributions that have been made so far. Article 10. Article 10 seeks to transfer $35,000 or a greater or lesser amount for the purposes of retaining a consultant to study the Department of Public Works. When the charter was changed, several functions that were not previously under the jurisdiction of the department were added to it. Additionally, the new Longmeadow High School has components that greatly expand the level of responsibility for the DPW. And finally, the town is in the process of looking to replace the existing DPW facility, which is in a severe state of deterioration. Because of these factors, the town wants to analyze the department to determine if the level of resources the department has are appropriate for the service demands and to make sure that it is structured appropriately to gain maximum efficiency and resource allocation. We are seeking to do this now in advance of establishing a new facility to make sure that if we design a new DPW building, it reflects a reorganized department that is suitable both today and for the future. Article 11. Article 11 seeks to transfer $25,000 to offset the cost of installing crosswalk signals at the intersection of Long Meadow and Converse Streets. Recently, a cyclist was hit attempting to cross Long Meadow Street due to some confusion about when it was safe for a pedestrian to cross. While fortunately no one was seriously hurt during that incident, it did highlight the confusion that the existing traffic signals can create f for pedestrians. The installation of crossing signals will help ameliorate that confusion and make it a safer pedestrian environment. The remaining two articles, Articles 12 and 13, are citizen petition articles, which means a group of town residents filled out a petition and submitted it to the town to have the article on the warrant, which is the right of all citizens in the town of Longmeadow. One petition involves the current bylaws regarding overnight parking. The other petition is related to the establishment of a casino in the city of Springfield. I hope this information has been helpful in better understanding the articles for the Fall Town Meeting Warrant, and we hope to see you on Tuesday the 5th. Thank you.